we keep talking about Caleb Williams and how incredibly difficult it will be to sort of contain him. But as we mentioned, the former Heisman Trophy winner is now here in Tempe. It's been a little while since the Heisman winner has played here at Frank Cush Field. And with more on that, we send it down to the sidelines with our third member of the broadcast, Ben Paris. Matt, that's exactly right. It's been almost two decades, 18 years to be in Zach since a Heisman Trophy winner played in Mountain America Stadium. It was Matt Leinert, the USC quarterback, sounds familiar, the 2004 Heisman Trophy winner, won after the undefeated season, played here in 2005. He threw 23 for 39 with 258 yards that night. No touchdowns or interceptions, but hey, Lindale White and Reggie Bush combined for four touchdowns when USC won 38 to 28. ASU quarterback Sam Keller threw five interceptions for ASU, and that one, eight, the next Heisman Trophy winner to play here as well, was Bush in 2005, but that one was unfortunately forfeited a year later. Matt Lyle, the offense of Arizona State comes out. So far, so good because of Kenny Dillingham. Now play calling with more on that. We send it down to Ben Paris. Matt, thank you. And it was on Monday at practice when Coach Dillingham took over those play calling duties to create what he said was a sense of urgency. And if the Sun Devils haven't been playing that way so far, I don't know how they've been playing because they do seem to have that sense of urgency. What Coach Dillingham has done during timeouts and in between plays is he's gone over to the offense on the bench and he's scripted the first two plays of each drive. So when the ASU offense hits the field here in a second, these first two plays will be scripted ahead of time. Got some injury news down at the sideline. Our guy Ben Paris has some updates for us down there. Ben. Yeah, first things off here into the locker room after he got banged up. Something to keep an eye on though. Jalen Conyers looked like something with his lower body was stumbling after that third down play and why, or that second down play why he had to come out on third down. Never actually made his way into the injury tent. Was talking with Coach Dillingham. Seems like he's good to go at least right now. We'll see what happens after he comes back out of the locker room. Thank you so much for that, Ben. That's going to be something to keep an eye on, especially Jalen Conyers. We've only seen him just have one catch tonight. The They're making it close. Trojans have won six of the last eight meetings. And to tell you more about the history between these two teams, we go down to Ben Paris sideline. Jonah, thank you very much. It is the 40th all-time meeting between Arizona State and USC tonight. And it, USC leads the overall series 25-14. to 14, And, of course, it's the final time that these two teams will play as members of the Pac-12 Conference. But let's talk about some of the biggest games in the series history. How about 1978? ASU won over number two USC 20 to seven in their first season in the Pac-12. How about 1996? ASU's 11 win season. It was the first season of college football overtime. ASU won it in double overtime. They went on a little bit of a slump. They lost 11 in a row in the early 2000s. But in 2013, ASU put up 62 points. Lane Kiffin got fired as the team got back to USC. And how about 2014? We can't forget this one. The Jail Mary. Kenny Dillingham said it was his favorite moment of the series history. Jalen Strong with the 46-yard touchdown on the final play of regulation as ASU won 38-34. They scored three touchdowns in the last four minutes. It's a 27-21 lead for the U. SC Trojans with 6.29 to go in the third. We go down on the field to Ben Paris. Jonah, thank you, and it seems appropriate to talk about basketball because Kenny Dillingham's been talking about it all week. He said earlier this week he doesn't care if he's playing Michael Jordan in basketball. He's not out there to lose. He wants to win. He said in his Monday press conference after the loss to Fresno State, one thing our players know about me is that if I get on a team, if I go play hoops in the morning or if I go do something, I want to be the team that's not expected to win. I mean, it's just not as fun. He wants these guys to fight. He wants to be the underdog, and it looks like they're really channeling that tonight. Thanks, Ben. Dillingham also said he compared the team to a bamboo tree. Back here for the fourth quarter with 10.31 to play. 35-21 lead for the USC Trojans, and now we'll go down to the field with our sideline reporter, Ben Paris. Guys, the first guy to go over to Drew Pine after that fumble was Jaden Rashada. He's on crutches tonight. All we know is a four to six week injury, but he was the first guy in Pine's face. You got this, stay in it, and he, the entire offense, tapping everybody on the shoulder, everybody on the back, keep battling, keep battling, keep battling. Jandon Rashada is very much a part of this game, even if he's not playing in it, guys. He was named to the leadership council for a reason, Matt. 